architects are part of a, a range of people, including you know writers, um, filmmakers, um, cultural producers, and scientists as well in thinking about how we can portray animals and flora and fauna in general. The barrier between um, you know us and animals outside are often designed in such a way where it's almost like hostile. How we how we include them into the way we design buildings is is something we could do a lot more of. In a way, an architect is almost like a curator of some type, yeah. you know, because it's like if you if you're a curator that's interested in ecology, then you then you have a kind of ear for it, and then you're you're kind of paying attention. If you're if you're just into you know form or something like that, or or you're not interested in it, then you'll tune it out. So yeah, for sure. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but your recent proposal hidden in plain sight for eco visionaries mm -hmm. suggests using the urban furnishings to bring awareness to non-humans in the urban space. Do you feel like that project was kind of born out of a want to change cultural attitudes? So a word I, I've been thinking about a lot recently is charisma mm -hmm. and, um, and charisma in non-human species um, typically is, uh, I guess, a term that's used by conservation biologists to talk about species that are typically thought of as flagship species, cute, fuzzy, or so on. With that Hidden in Plain Sight project, we were very interested in the world of insects, um, which is a, typically an animal that is not thought of as charismatic at all, in fact, usually hated. So we wanted to tease out some of the kind of characteristics that and try to bring a sense of charisma, thinking about things like, you know, how do you see the world through the the lens of insect eyes. Like how, how do we try to even understand insect perception and how interesting that is? Is there a way to kind of like about that? Is there a way to kind of like think about the world through camouflage, the way that butterflies do? We were really interested in, in this condition called um, positive phototaxis, which is the tendency that insects have to fly toward light at nighttime. Like how interesting would it be if you, if the, you know, since this is something that's happening anyway, how interesting would it be to kind of draw attention to that as a kind of spectacle any sort of design attention given to an animal that um, that typically is uh, dismissed or disregarded by humans is is already like one step in my mind toward or making design accessible in terms of biodiversity. So over the time that you've kind of been curating your practice, <laughs> um, have you seen attitudes change? Do you think towards nature and wildlife being kind of in our space? Prior to Bat Tower, I, I would say, like, at least in the U.S., it didn't seem like there were that many people who thought that these issues were really, like, significant architecturally. Um, I do think the attitudes have been changing about um, inclusion of diverse species. Um, I, I do think that we're probably in for another shift at some point um, in the way that we are thinking about things because with so much attention on social justice, I see that there's a lot of interest in really thinking about environmental justice. You know, how do we think? How do we think about the built environment um, more equitably? And thinking about you know resources and how to kind of like live in the not how to not rely so much on ex, on extractive resources. Let's say how we think about non-human species relative to these conversations. I think is going to be an interesting um, and important turn in the coming years. The company I work for are they're talking about um, things like regenerative design and mm -hmm. rewilding is now a big part of a lot of the projects that they do. It's exciting to see people in the industry talking about things or like having the conversation similar to what we're having. No, it's great. I, I feel like, you know, 10 years ago, the conversations around sustainability really revolved around technology and, in, in, and making technology more efficient or um, you know, how to make a better solar panel, you know, it was, it was, yeah. the, or how to make a, a tighter building enclosure or something, which is, you know, these things are important, but rewilding is not something that was like part of the conversation and thinking about less extractive economies. Like that was, that was just not uh, as much part of the conversation. So it is, it is an exciting moment, I think.